morning, everyone. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we join together on this feast day of St. Agatha, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the virgin martyr, St. Agatha, implore your compassion for us, O Lord. We pray, for she found favor with you by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something. And so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. O oh, rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? Whoever is ashamed of me or and of my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his glory, and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. We join together today and celebrate this feast day of St. Agatha. We see in her a woman who was dealing with a lot of the chaos of the age of her own time. Because in the 250s when she lived, or at least when she was going through her great trials, she was dealing with Roman persecution. I know. It's like almost like clockwork. The Romans get upset and then something happens, right? But this is what the ancient world was. For the first 300 years of, the, of Christianity, you were taking your life in your hands to be a Christian in a lot of instances. And it wasn't exactly given the two thumbs up by the Roman Empire. Not in almost any way, shape, or form. She was a noble woman, considered of a higher class, a higher status. Yet Christianity looked at as this like kind of almost like step down on everything. Like, it's just one of those things that she engaged in during the course of her life of becoming a Christian that kind of drew the, uh, shall we say, all of this ear of all these people around her, most especially a Roman governor who wanted a relationship with her. But St. Agatha wanted a relationship more than anything with God. And as such, she gave herself completely over to God and continued to resist the advances of the governor. Well, the governor had a plan. He was going to send uh, St. Agatha, uh, how do I say this gently at 8 a.m. in the morning, um, to, uh, shall we say, a house of maybe ill repute, and basically trying to break her spirit that ultimately she would acquiesce to his demands. But during that time, she remained prayerful, Consider it and never bent. Finally, she came to the point where the governor tried to press upon her one more time about the status of, you're a noble woman, why aren't you being noble? And she says, to be noble is to follow God. That's exactly what I'm doing. Well, at this, as you can imagine, said governor being told no over and over and over again, well, it didn't work out very well for the governor, did it? So ultimately he had St. Agatha's life taken from her. But she remained faithful to the end, in the midst of temptation, in the midst of trial, in the midst of the cross that our Lord just spoke of in the Gospel today. I think in our own world, dear friends, we've, we're not being exactly thrown into what we would call situations of red martyrdom. Not at all. Well, on the most part. We are being thrown into situations of what we would call a different kind of martyrdom. A faithfulness that is meant to exist, that doesn't take your life, but takes almost everything else. It takes your reputation, maybe your own status, maybe all of these things of worldly pleasures and even your good name. To follow Christ in the midst of our modern world and actually hold to his tenets versus our own? Let me tell you something right now. It's going to get you into trouble. It's going to get you into trouble. To be a faithful Christian, to make it very clear, is going to have its effects on your life. But it's also going to have its effects on the good side as well. What was it that St. Agatha started to tune into that enabled her to stay faithful. 
every last gift we cling to in this life, love, beauty, truth, all of its derivative forms, all of its ways that it surfaces, it finds its origin in one spot alone. The author of it all, God. And the saints, their secret is, is that through their prayer life and their complete surrendering over to God, they start to have these encounters with our Lord. The paradoxical thing is that as they go closer to him, they also go closer to his cross. And yet they don't mind that. They don't care about that element of it because... The closer they are to the cross, the closer they are to Christ at the apex of his power, at the apex of his blessing, at the apex of all the gifts that he has bestowed upon us by the sacrifice he made for our eternal salvation. Now, I'm not up here to sit there and say I've done it perfect because I can tell you assuredly I have not. I need to seek out the sacrament of reconciliation just as much as anybody else. You could go ask my confessor, but he couldn't tell you crap anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. Like, probably the garbage I was dumping off, as it were. But the idea is this, friends. We have the ability to jettison this stuff over and over again. But we also need to continually, when we go to that sacrament of reconciliation, to make that continued firm purpose of amendment. To ask the Lord with all of our heart, purify this thing in here. Change what's going on in here. Help these attachments that are a part of me to go by the wayside so that I can attach to the one thing that does matter, which is the Lord himself. He even says that, if you remember in the scriptures. Remember the whole episode of Martha and Mary? Remember Martha's like, hey, She's sitting at your feet. I'm doing all the work. What gives? But our Lord's response is, you're anxious about many things, Martha, but only one thing is necessary. One thing is necessary. To stay at the foot of the feet of the Lord and let him continually move our heart such that we can attach to him and his holy will for our lives. Perhaps, my dear friends, as we're approaching Lent, which is literally nine days away, are we preparing our hearts for what needs to happen in that season for God to do his work within? Let's not give up the same old stuff as we get ready for the season. Find the obstacle that is preventing you from going deeper with the Lord. And make that the thing you get rid of during this time period. So that the Lord can do his good work and help us to continue along the path he has traced for us. With that in mind, we ask for the intercession of a great dear saint that we celebrate today as we pray together. Saint Agatha, pray for us. Confident in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. For those longing for children, may their patience be in hope be fulfilled. With the blessing of new life, we pray to the Lord. For children who feel estranged from their parents, may they seek means of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. For those who do not have Christ in their lives, 
May the church share in their joys and hopes, fears and anxieties, and so invite them to his love. We pray to the Lord. For those who long to serve Christ but do not know how, may the promptings of the Spirit encourage them to discipleship. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering and for those who care for them, may trust in the abundant grace of God offer them peace. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they rest in the peace of heaven. We pray to the Lord. As we lift up the people of St. Patrick's in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, help to, through the intercession of Saint Agatha to transform our hearts that we may be faithful disciples of your Son, who came to offer his life on the cross for our salvation, that we may join him eternally in the halls of heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in celebration of blessed Saint Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, o Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. 
Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On you stay, we toll this back at Abundi, Miserere no beams. On you stay, we toll this back at Abundi, Miserere. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. The Lamb who is at the center of the throne will lead them to the springs of the waters of life. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the verge, nope, did that one already. Folks, we're going to get better today, I promise, at some point. Oh God, who bestowed on the blessed, on blessed St. Agatha a crown among the saints, for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Friends, I do believe it is the first of the month, which means we have a uh, Eucharistic adoration tonight, if my memory serves. I'm looking at Denise to try to give me a, a head shake that I'm right. That's how what kind of day I'm having right now. But that being said, uh, we'll have adoration tonight from 6.30 to 7.30 for, our, again, for a nice holy hour. So if you have time to join us and to take that time to pray before the Lord, we invite you back this evening for just that. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Great day, everyone.